All right, greetings, Glitter Gang, and welcome back to Catherine Scraps Live. My name is Catherine, and this is the second part of the Thursday, September 21st show. You are, we are working on the uh, December Daily Wallet album still. This is the fifth wallet. This is a crow Marcel bought, brought me. He thinks I don't know how to get my own food. Believe me, I know where the food is. Um, and we are good to go. So I'm going to start by, we're doing the, we've done the inside of wallet number five. Now I'm going to do quickly the outside of wallet number five. Then next week we're going to take a brief hiatus from Christmas to do Thanksgiving. Um, and we are going to do a, another, it'll be free and open to everyone, you know the huge but we're gonna do um, a Thanksgiving project and then uh, just and it should be something we can just do in one day oh the series I was gonna talk about is I'm just reading uh, realm of the elderlings by Robin Hobb it's just long 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 it's like four million words 16 books I think it took her to like 25 years to write it or something crazy so it's it's just long but it was already done when I started it there are other long series that were not done when I started them and I never finished them because I stopped caring and so what I've learned is if there's too long in between them I get bored you know or if things get too far away from where they started so like i mentioned this before but the patricia cornwell series i read a bunch of those and then things got really just like weird <laughs> so all right so what i'm going to do is on the inside i'm just going to mark four and a half inches from the tabbed end So I know where to put my tape. That's the main reason. Um, and I, when I was like in high school, I was reading The Wheel of Time, which is, I think that's 14 or 15 books now. But I just got bored, like waiting around for it to get finished, you know. And I didn't care enough about it by the time I got bored to pick it up once it had been finished so I actually do think that I will the only way for me to read a long series is I have to read them all like one book a month for like a year otherwise it's too far between them and I don't care you know so Now this is not for, for a, um, what I call anthology series, which is where each of the books is a standalone novel and the connections are loose. And so like the connection might be that the people in book two are the siblings of the people in book one. And this is just some story related to them. And so you'll see the people from book one sometimes cause they'll be at family gatherings or whatever. But each book is really its own thing. Or the books are loosely connected by theme, but they have no common characters or anything like that. That would be another way to do it. Like all the stories are from this one small town, for example. Um, now, if you read them all in order, you know, will it mean more to you in the later books because you get more of the little Easter eggs and jokes? Sure. But could you pick up volume 17 and still get what was going on and have a satisfying time then fine all right so here's what we're going to do so we're going to stick this tab in here and if it's ever a little tight just get your bone folder and give it a little stretch you know you're not major but you can bend paper fibers you can stretch paper a little bit after it's been stuck down and put your tab in this so you know that your positioning is accurate. All right. And then you're gonna lift up. So what I'm just doing is I'm just lifting up this 
and I am gonna, I guess I'll do a pencil. Well, I'll do a pen so you can see it. So what I do is I'm just looking up from the sides of this, but I'm making sure where I put the pen is under, is away from the edge. So you see how the pen's away from the edge? That's what I want. So now what I can do is I pull this out and I can line it up in between these two marks. And then all I have to do is line the line I drew earlier, check to make sure everything's still in the right spot. If it shifted at all. All right, it's all good. Gonna burnish. But yeah, Patricia Cornwell, the Scarpetta series just got too outlandish for me. Um, there were too many stolen identities. Too many people faked being Scarpetta <laughs> that I couldn't take it anymore. It's like, how many times are people gonna steal this woman's identity? I don't know, maybe that happens a lot to public figures. I don't know, but it was, the plot of too many books. <laughs> so. It's stuck to my hand. Okay, I got it. What is this getting stuck on? Ugh. I'll be so glad when this dehumidifier bucket shows up because I really feel like a huge part of my inability to line pockets has to do, do with humidity in this room. <sighs> okay. All right, so there we go. So now the flap is on and the flap is in the right spot. We're gonna flip over to the back again and we're gonna line this pocket with the leaves. I also kind of want to read my brilliant friend that series is it the Neapolitan series those are supposed to be really good people say they're really really dramatic and they like sob through them maybe that is what I need to read Yeah, it's rough. It's rough for us, Judy. <laughs> it's rough for us. That's for sure. <laughs> the humidity is, 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 it's weird. Like I said, I was, I was in Florida. That is a humid place. I don't know what's different. And it's only in this room. So I think it's something about the conversion and just maybe because I know that part that air conditioning has like a dehumidifying effect and this air conditioner has a drain and everything, but I just wonder if it's, you know, it's not the same, you know what I mean? As like a, a whole house unit is. That's the only thing I can think of. Ugh, good grief. Just go in. There we go. Okay. That's crooked and I just don't care anymore. Okay. So, <laughs> so 
right. <laughs> All right. So now I have this vertical one. So it just is what it is. Staying crooked. Staying crooked. <laughs> Can't take it anymore. <laughs> You're on my last nerve. I think those things are supposed to be here Monday, so. Hopefully next Thursday it'll be better for our Thanksgiving project. It's the way it's kind of made all the dried glue on my mat tacky so everything sticks to it is probably the most annoying part. But also how soft and moist the paper is and how hard it is to line pockets is a, another big irritation. <laughs> so. All right. Okay, so let's start with these two and get them out of the way. Well, that's what I, I'm thinking, Donna, because it was a garage, that it's something to do with the wall, the insul that, that, that it's just something to do with the way it's designed. Because it was originally a garage, if they didn't, if they didn't insulate or vapor barrier or moisture barrier or blah, 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 I don't know, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, unfortunately for me... Um, I'm out of vertical photos, but it's okay because I'm just gonna, cut some paper and make a few more just with my stamp. And I'm going to be able to get three out of the strip of paper I have over here. So I'm just going to quickly stamp them because I need, I need more than three, but at least, you know, anyway, hopefully that'll keep the moisture down. Oh, this isn't the right stamp, of course. Why is everything? I'm just going to print a new sheet, guys. It's going to be too... I don't know. I'm going to need more next week. I'm just going to print a sheet really quickly. I'm not going to switch the camera because I already... It's, you know, it, it's already a made thing. A made thing. It's already... You've seen it a million times. <laughs> But I have set up a 13 by 19 sheet so that it has eight four by six photo mats on it. And I'm just gonna stick some paper in it. I'm just going to print, I'm going to print um, six of them, but I'm not going to feed the other ones through. So you may hear the printer like continue to make noises, but I'm not going to. You know, we don't need all six of them to finish this page. We only need two. So, this 
but there's always something. Why does the printer always take the most time when you're like, I just need this one quick thing, printer. You're just putting, printing a black and white. It's very easy. <laughs> All right. So the sheet just looks like this. So now we have a nice little sack of those guys. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna put ATG on the inside. for the photo mats. I did get new ATG. Well, that would make sense, Donna, because the first floor of the house is brick. So, you know, that could be what we're dealing with. And this is on the first floor. The top half is like, oops, I forgot to, I just need to cut a quarter of an inch off the bottom of this. Ugh. So. cat hi how are you welcome are you gonna come say hi no I don't think so I don't think we're gonna get a viewing a tiny viewing but we'll see maybe maybe Okay, thankfully they didn't stick. Okay.
but we'll get it figured out. If the um, the little bucket thing doesn't work, then I'll just, you know, I'll just get over it and I'll get a dehumidifier for this room. But I just hate the sound they make, the smell. I don't like them. So if we can avoid them, hopefully we can. So, the vet did say that they think Marcel, um, that his injury was, like, we never knew what caused it because he basically he was already injured when they trapped his colony and he went straight from the trap into emergency surgery so and they just they just don't know what happened to him but this vet she thought it was that he was hit by a car that's what she thought it was so poor little guy what a rough start it's amazing how like relaxed and confident and happy he is very resilient Marcel very resilient like he doesn't even know he doesn't have any they ask us when we take him to the vet vets ask like what problems does he have with the eye and it's like none <laughs> you know he just really doesn't um it doesn't bother seem to bother him at all he occasionally has to use his paw to help with depth for uh depth perception but it's not even that often that he has to do that and it's usually just with water you know trying to see water like how how deep a bowl is that sort of thing so he really is like just happy as a little clam. All right, so now we're going to just cut out one eighth of an inch around this window. So, Well, Marcel has fish in his bowl. He has little mechanical fish to help him see, but he just rescues them all the time. So we had to put his bowl on a towel, a folded towel, because he keeps trying to rescue his fish. So... <laughs> His fish that are in his bowl to help him see. He's got little fish that float around, swim around in his bowl. And he just, he just rescues them over and over and over again. <laughs> they just are always right by the bowl. Um, he does have a fountain. So he, his water is always moving, thankfully. Um, we did put the fish in there to try and get him, you know, a little bit more interested. But like I said, he just, he just is trying to save the fishies. <laughs> Thank you. 
But yeah, he removes them and lays them gently beside the bowl. <laughs> so. He's a funny little guy, for sure. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put this down. So we taped around the outside and then also around the window. And now we're gonna place it down. All right. Love it. It looks great. So happy with that. So now we just have to repeat with this one. She likes fish flavored water. Their new thing that they're obsessed with is Origins, um, which are a kind of treat that we got because Kitty is on a no carb diet, an extremely low carb diet. Um, and so we found a cat treat that was, um, you know, that worked on that diet, but also like it was lo low enough in calories that so basically the way she gets fed is most of her calories come from tiki cat uh tiki cat specifically the luau <laughs> um and she gets one whole can of that a day and tiki cat is really big cans are like six ounces um and she that's because she's so large of a cat um that that's that's to lose weight she eats a can of that and then she's also supposed to eat four tablespoons of dr elsie's clean protein which is her dry food and that we give her as treats so she gets um we have some toys where you put the food in the toys and it takes them a long time to get it out and so she's fed those crunchies throughout the day in these toys um, as treats and any one round of those crunchies can be substituted by an equivalent amount of origins so she can have origins as like a treat treat and stay within her calories um, and origins are basically ground up as far as we can tell ground up freeze-dried jerky that's just extruded like pasta into these shapes they remind me of do you remember snakes growing up at at uh fourth of july those charcoal things um how they they always had like a fat bottom and then they like kind of arched out of it that's what these look like they look like what a snake looked like after it was all used up and so anyway they're just, we think they just grind the meat into a paste, freeze dry it, and then they extrude it, the paste or something. And I don't know, but it's basically just meat. Um, that's what it is. Cause that's really all she's supposed to be eating. And, um, the person, the person, the person who's obsessed with origin is Marcel. Like he 
goes bananas for Origins. Um, he like roots through all your stuff, looking for Origins. Um, he's just obsessed. And so we found out that the company Origin they make um, cat food also, and they spray that paste that they make their treats from they spray it on their kibble so we got that because we thought maybe he'd be like less wild for the treats if he was getting the flavor more often no it has not helped whatsoever so he has a problem <laughs> he has a really got a problem with origins it's so so funny um he, he just is, he just goes searching through shelves. If you rustle a package, he comes running to see if it was maybe an origin package. I mean, he really just loves origins. I've never seen anything like it. So Kitty thinks they're fine. She likes them as much as she likes any other food. So, you know, <laughs> of course, of course, the cat we got them for could care not could not care less. And the cat that they're not for is obsessed. All right, we did it. Okay, that's cute. That little layout is very cute. That turned out very nicely. Look at that. Like that. So we'll load everything up and get it, um, get the final look. And then that'll be that for the show this evening okay so we've got this flap and then in here of course is where you're going to put receipts ephemera all that kind of stuff you can put photo mats with individual photos in there if you want we're going to put this season's greetings in the back here. So that's where that goes. And then it'll get closed in there once we close the strap. The strap's still a little wet, so we probably won't. All right, so we've got our Merry Christmas. I'm going to go ahead and slide that in there. All right. We've got another little party tray here. More photo mats. Gonna slide that in there. Then we've got our beautiful tags. And then finally, Santa Claus letter. Let's flap on the back. All I want for Christmas is, and then this too. So cute little list we made ourselves and then this whole thing closes up again with the strap that goes through these loops and around the back okay so. there we go there that gives it the wallet look and the strap is extra long so that you can make this fatter because we have more expansion room on here if you want to add things to it you know, put photo mats in it, put more photo books in it, whatever you want to do, it's available. I'm going to remove the strap for it because it still needs to dry a little bit. I can still feel there's some moisture in it. So I'm just going to pull the strap out. Okay, so that leaves us with just one more. So. Okay. 
this. This. Not this. All right, so we've got all five of these. All right. Done so far. And then we just have to do this last one, which has this fireplace on it for Santa to come down. So that's the last one we're going to be working around. And this is what we've done so far. So uh, thank you so much for joining me again. Every step that you need to make this project exactly the way that I have, should you so desire, is posted in the archives. The, uh, the classroom membership uh, linked below in the video description if you want to see all the past shows from all the years um, that I've been doing this, which is since 2009, if you can believe it. Um, <laughs> it's been quite a while. So we've got a lot of projects there going back a long time, um, as well as everything from this. And then upcoming next week, we're going to do our Thanksgiving project. And then depending on how that goes, we will um, hopefully be back to this pretty shortly thereafter. Pretty shortly thereafter. I'm gonna sh uh, cut the rest of these <laughs> while I still can. Um, gonna get out and cut those. But, um, if you so i'll be back next week at uh 2 p.m eastern usa time and 9 p.m eastern usa time here on the catherine scraps channel be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications so that you know when we're going to be live um we're going to do a cool little thanksgiving project next week in time for the canadians to actually do it this year um without having to push it to Christmas. And that gives those of you who are here in the US plenty of time. Next week, we'll also talk about how we're feeling about doing Halloween this year. Um, again, I wanna do, if I do Halloween this year, I wanna do a cutesy Halloween more than I wanna do a scary Halloween. All right, so that being said, thank you so much for joining me, everyone. And I will see you next time. Bye.